Hello. Hello, hello. I'm putting it in low gear. <laughs> you ever see a, a recliner? <laughs> it's like a hearse four speed. You can recline very quickly or you can just lay your back. Lay your back. Anyway, Sir David the Bard. Uh, I'm coming to you from uh, the LDS Hospital here in Salt Lake. I just flew in. They have a helicopter pad and they brought me from the airport because I was going to speak to the um, doctor's convention here in Salt Lake City. Uh, I don't have a, a medical degree, damn it. <laughs> but they said, hey, can you come in and talk to uh, the community? And we'll have some doctors here in the building too. They're interested in what you have to say. Uh, all right, my usual fee, zero. <laughs> truth is free. If you got to pay for truth, you better take a look at what you're buying. You're buying someone else's bullshit. Anyway, anyway, um, I want to do <laughs> maybe my last video. It could be. <laughs> and this is something I've been thinking about for 68 years. <laughs> you people. Get your minds out of the gutter. Anyway, um, and I've been thinking about it, and um, a lot of times, uh, I think I've seen, or heard about at least, almost everything in life. I've lived a very rich and a very full life. Not that I'm smarter than anybody else, but you, when you run, <laughs> like Joseph Smith, from state to state, you learn a lot about different things. Anyway, the master of uh, what, all trades, uh, no, no, the uh, I can't think of it. You know what I'm saying. Now, I have to remind you that I have dementia, okay? And when I speak, I'm speaking in principle. You know that. Most of my viewers know that because you'll see me misspell. You'll see me uh, talk about the speed limit the other day being 63. I meant to say 73. You know, my, my readers don't bang me on that shit because they know it's the principle. If you post the speed limit faster, the car should go faster. They go slower in Utah. That was the principle. So I'm trying to just uh, bullshit you. <laughs> anyway, um, I told you uh, years ago, I hung out my uh, gynecological sign um, uh, with free pap smears and uh, nobody came. Now, that was disappointing. Most of the time in, in uh, America, if we start a new business, uh, people will at least show up, uh, but no one did. <laughs> no one did. Now, I think I've seen and heard about everything. I've been married six times. I've got 14 kids. Um, uh, human uh, sexuality and development is something I taught in, in college uh, and I have degrees in, in human services. So. I thought I'd heard it all and seen it all, and in counseling, I think I have, but I came across uh, about a, a year ago, now I've had to be thinking about this for a year, a year ago, there was a plastic surgeon down in Provo, Utah, Mormon, <laughs> who was operating on vaginas. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there, okay? Because I'm going to try to make this very professional, and there's nothing funny about a vagina. <laughs> I can't even start. Now, I thought, well, what the hell could he be doing cutting on a vagina? So anyway, you know, being a master's level person, I decided to do some research. Um, it wasn't curiosity. It was medical uh, motivated. <laughs> I can't even say it without... Okay. So, he went to jail. I don't, I don't know all of the charges, but, you know, I don't know if he ran off with a lady's vagina lips. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't see that part of the, the article. But anyway, here's, here's what I want to share. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't know that there's women, and I guess a, a group of them, a, a fairly large group of them, that they don't like those uh, labia manaura uh, lips sticking out of their vagina. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to be medical here. You know, quit snickering and quit your damn laughing. And any of you that got your thumbs up, put them down. Give the bard a little respect here. So anyway, um, I did a little research on it. 
Oh, actually, I did a lot of research. I've been doing research on this for 68 years. <laughs> anyway. I guess ladies go into his uh, office. Now, I'm only imagining this, okay? I don't have any records. I don't have any tapes. I, I, you know, it's not Watergate. I am not a crook. I guess women go into the office, and when they, they go to make an appointment, the lady will say, uh, well, what is it uh, you're coming in for? And I don't know, do the ladies say to get my inner lips cut down a little bit? I don't know. What, and, and then there's a code for that, slash, 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 little lips. I don't know. So anyway, you have to tell the receptionist why you're there. Maybe some of them say, my pussy's too big. I don't know what the girls say, but I'm going to find out because I'm going to stand down there and pretend that I'm in there. What would I be in there for? I don't know. Anyway. So anyway, they make the appointment. And uh, then uh, the girl goes into the doctor's office. Now, I don't know if you take your mother to this kind of shit. I don't know if you take your husband to this kind of shit. Maybe it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you and the doctor. I don't know. Does the doctor have a nurse in the office while he's uh, investigating <laughs> your, your contemplating surgery? Okay, so you go in, and uh, the doctor says, Hi, how are you? Can we take your blood pressure? And can we see how tall you are? And I, I, if I was the woman, I'd say, hell. You need to know how tall I am to cut out my pussy. <laughs> but, but I'm just a man, you know, and the bar. So anyway, uh, he says, well, uh, let's take a look. <laughs> now that's the part <laughs> that I'm thinking of getting a medical degree in my old age. Let's take a look. Now, this has got to be... <laughs> One of the most difficult examinations that a doctor has to do or that a woman has to be subject to. So she lays down and he said, what seems to be the problem? And she grabs her lips. <laughs> They're elephant ears. They're elephant ears. I don't want elephant ears. I see. I see. Now, <laughs> he says, well, for the, the pre-surgical uh, uh, examination, we have to have two or three doctors that approve of this. Is it okay if I take a few pictures? Bard, over here with the camera. Yes, sir. H hold that. <laughs> and he'll say, honey, you look qualified. You look qualified. Now, here, here's what happens. Is she finally is able to put her clothes back on and stuff that thing into underpants and uh, he says I think we're going to be able to help you and now here comes the serious conversation she'll say how much is this going to be and <laughs> how much you got honey <laughs> now the doctor's got to be cool in, in these situations he's got to be able to say with a straight face well the surgery all depends upon the difficulty of the surgery. And she says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, um, you know, I'm going to have to have an assistant um, uh, a surgeon there in case I have a heart attack. Someone's got to be able to finish uh, cutting on you. <laughs> and I have an, an anesthesiologist. Uh, I have to pay him, and I have a nurse, and then I have to pay for the, the operation room. And uh, she kept saying, well, I know all that. How much is this going to be? He says, well, it, it goes by the quarter inch. <laughs> and she goes, what the hell does that mean? He said, well, you know, if I, if I just have to take off a quarter inch, it's $1,000. A thousand? He said, yeah, but in your situation, it's going to be more than a thousand. <laughs> How much? You know, well, take your panties off again and, and spread that thing. Let me get a measuring tape on it. <laughs> so she does, and he does. He says, sweetheart, that's over $15,000 right there. This is called elephantitis elephant lips. <laughs> and it's a rare disease, but a lot of girls get it. So anyway, now, I know women. They try to negotiate. He says, put that thing back in there. <laughs> Stuff it back in there. Now we know it's going to be $15,000. Okay, do you have any sales 
I'm pussy cutting. He goes, well, yeah, at Christmas. <laughs> Jesus. This will be my last video. I know they're going to shut me down on this. <laughs> so, yes, at Christmas we have um, a Pink Friday. <laughs> he goes, a Pink Friday? Yeah, we don't do Black Friday, but we do cut on pink things. <laughs> so, yeah, at Christmas uh, we, we have a 20% discount. And, and honey, we have no layaway. <laughs> you come in, you go out. There's no layaway. We cannot lay away a vagina. Says, All right, well, there, there's 20% right there. He says, now, let me ask you something else. I says, yes, ma'am. Is there any such thing as two for one? I have a girlfriend that wouldn't come in with me today, <laughs> but she's as bad as I am. And, uh, you know, if you do two and you just put them on two tables, he says, yes, we can do a two... Uh, not two for one, but we can give another 20% off there. Just have her come in and drop her panties, and we'll see what we can do for her. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Now, the other thing that she wants to know is, uh, can you make payments? And he said, well, yeah. The doctor said, yeah, you can make payments on a pussy fix. But if you don't pay the whole thing, we are going to sue you to get, you know, our fees and, and the expenses that we put out. She says, well, that would be a little embarrassing for all of us, wouldn't it, if I have to go to the, uh, to the court? And, uh, you know, the, uh, they want to say, well, let me see those lips, <laughs> what they used to be out, like the, the picture. She says, that's a little embarrassing. Said, well, yeah, it could be for both of us. <laughs> could you not sue me? Could I sign a waiver that my vagina is secret and it's not going to be in a public courtroom and on the front page <laughs> of, the, of the desert news? What is that, a winged aircraft? And No, that's Becky. <laughs> that's Becky. She was down with that Provo uh, gynecologist uh, surgeon guy. Now, you can see this, this provides some difficulty for women, I guess. Uh, now, I, I just want to put a sideline on Now, that's history. That, those are, that's all fact. I just want to put a little sideline on this. I've always been taught and believe, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, and I pretty much live by that uh, icon, uh, staying for, you know, <laughs> almost a hundred years now. But, I, you know, I want to back up just a little bit. Now, I was a Mormon for over 53 years and uh, much to my d dismay and we weren't allowed to look at naked girls you know well we weren't allowed we did but we, we were allowed okay so anyway um, it wasn't until I you know freed myself from a cult hanging on a stick to say well you know maybe there's some things I've uh, missed that I haven't seen uh, and there were and there were now, I, w I was of the belief if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, if a, gi a vagina works, hell, you know, uh, what can you do to it? <laughs> but <laughs> I was naive. I was young, and I was a hung-up Mormon on guilt. And, uh, you know, uh, Joseph Smith is banging away on a 14-year-old, and I'm on the biggest guilt trip when I'm 20 years old. That I can't look at a Playboy magazine. Hey. What's fair here? So anyway, uh, in my uh, research, <laughs> totally medical research, I can see why it's still not broken, but they may want to fix it. <laughs> you know, if you can't run fast naked, <laughs> girls, and you're tripping on stuff, that might be an indication that you're looking for that Provo uh, surgeon. I mean, he's in jail, but he, his friend, uh, his brother, still does the surgery for him. And he doesn't have a license either. So anyway, uh, the thing that, that always amazes me is how uh, historically the Mormon Church says you want to marry and you don't want to have uh, any premarital uh, intercourse or heavy petting or whatever. That's their rule. Well, you know, it reminds me of uh, marrying a girl, and you think she's cute as hell. She's got a wonderful personality, a good brain, good sense of humor, lots of money. <laughs> I never could find one of those. Anyway, uh, and then you marry her, and you make your commitments for time and eternity, and you do your pay, lay, ale, and the slitting of the throat, the slitting of the stomach, and, you, you know, families are forever, and you uh, go on your honeymoon night, 
and you pull her panties off, and you know you you feel like you're in Africa. There's elephant ears all over the bed. You're not quite sure where the girl is. Now, it, 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 I don't know. I've been divorced five times, but that was never a cause of action. She has elephant lips. <laughs> I don't know what a judge would say. say. The girl is nice. I love her. Everything about her. But damn, she's got elephant lips. I don't want to be with this girl. It's it's scary for me. You know, I may fall in and never come out again. <laughs> so anyway, judge it. Tie a two by four on your butt. <laughs> you won't fall in. Say so, okay. Anyway, what do you do? It's part of your wife. It's part of your girlfriend. You got to see and do everything else, but now the the, the most important part. It's kind of like a car. You can look at it, look at it, and look at it, but you're not allowed to to start it and open the engine. And then suddenly you buy the car, and then you open the engine. <laughs> There's a little mouse in there running around, or an elephant. It could be either. Anyway, here's what I say. Let's be fair. You should be able to get married with a contingency, male and female. The contingency says we love each other, we've seen each other, we've explored each other's background. However, we have not looked at the genitalia of our mates, and this marriage is based upon our approval. Fair is fair. The Mormons don't want you to look. You may end up with something that scares you to death. It scares you to death. Woman, same way. You know, he's got big hands and big feet, but good Lord, I'm out of here. Inky dinky. Inky dinky man. No, I'm not staying married. Uh, I was just giving some, you know, legal advice out for, for marriage contracts. And the Mormon temple ought to say, you know, I swear before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar, uh, if this uh, mate has ugly, little, or genitalia that will scare <laughs> an army of men, I'm out of here. Bow your head and say, yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, and then I would have business cards. I would have business cards out of the uh, in the uh, celestial room. So when you walk through, and uh, you know, you think you might need a little trim or a hack. I don't know. You pick up the business card, and here's an LDS um, uh, plastic surgeon who will fix your pussy. And <laughs> and if he won't, there's another card for the Boy Scout leader. Uh, he'll fix any penises that are. And then, you know, and good Lord, before I get done here, there'll be a whole card table with, with hundreds and hundreds of cards on it where the Mormons, uh, you can get a card for the, the eighth grade 14-year-old uh, girls known as Little Joseph's Wives. You can pull one of those and go to the local, um, you know, junior high school and say, hey, you know, flaming sword man. <laughs> and she, no, no, no. <laughs> This will be, I'm sure, my last video. I'm sure the Danites will get me. But I just wanted to tell you uh, that I have, you know, studied this uh, problem intently. And um, <laughs> I was going to rate my wives on this program. But, you know, sometimes the bard has judgment. Sometimes the bard don't want to be in jail. <laughs> Like today, I don't want to be in jail. So anyway, I, I'll just say this. Um, I have a range, a range of wives that go from none to elephant ear. But I didn't have money for a surgeon, and when you try that at home and using a kitchen knife, she's not happy with that. She's not happy with that at all. So anyway. I still have uh, health and enable, marrow and bones. Thank you, Lord, and send you power and priest to be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. Pay me, lay me, and ail me. O oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Don't slit my throat. Don't slit my stomach. Visit the bard store, and um, I will probably be going into business here. And uh, Mark at the bard store will be selling. Um, uh, surgical instruments to perform these uh, uh, um, surgeries. And um, if any of you are interested, just go to the bard store and uh, get yourself a paring knife. <laughs> and when your wife sees you ordering 
back from the barn store, I would recommend that she gets the hell out of there. <laughs> she gets the hell out of there. So anyway, this is the barn. He's gone, and I hope I'm not gone forever. Bye.